Don Lemon uh, finally dropped his interview with Elon Musk. Uh, we'll brush over some of the ketamine parts of which we've already discussed. Frankly, not that all that controversial. And let's get to the po- debate around censorship, the First Amendment, and moderation, which dra- Don really is incapable of wrapping his head around. Let's take a listen. Do you think if there, if if you moderated yourself more, if there was better content moderation on the platform that you wouldn't have to answer these questions from reporters about the great great replacement theory as it relates to I don't have to answer these questions. Great replacement theory as it relates to Jewish people. Do you think that? I don't have to answer questions from reporters. Don, the only reason I'm doing this interview is because you're on the X platform and you asked for it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Otherwise, I would not do this interview. So you don't think, you, do you think that you wouldn't get in trouble or you wouldn't be criticized for these things? I'm or criticized that possibly. I could care less. It, you, don't, you don't care? No, I don't Why care. not? I don't think people should care what the media thinks about them. They're e- terrible judges of character. Even someone who has one of the biggest social media and biggest information platforms in the world, you don't think, you don't care? You don't think that there's, you have any x.com or you have any responsibility to the truth or moderating? The platform? Uh, you're conflating the truth with the, with the media, and I think the media is uh, not truthful. You recently called content moderation, though, a digital chastity belt. Do you think that, do you, you believe that X and you have some responsibility to moderate hate speech on the platform? I think we have a responsibility to adhere to the law, and we have a responsibility to be transparent uh, about when things are shown, why they're shown. Uh, so we, that's why we, we uh, open source our algorithm. Um, the, I think once you start getting going beyond the law, now you're putting your thumb on the scale. And we don't want to put our thumb on the scale. It doesn't concern you that hate speech has gone. Research shows that it's gone up on the platform since you took over. That's not concerning to you? I believe that is false. In fact, the research that I've seen says it, go, it went down. Uh, so what, what they will typically do is they will count the number of posts, but not count the number of views. So what matters is, was that uh, post given high visibility or what did, did like one person see it? Uh, and if you look at the number of views, of how, 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 many, how many times was Hayes content viewed on our platform? It is down substantially. Yeah. Well, that's not was what the study shows. And you said you like transparency. I'm going to show you this. And, and Don, you can, you can get a study that will tell you whatever you want. But this, this, this is, these are just a handful of extremely, you look at those anti-Semitic and racist tropes and tweets. And as of this morning, they're still on X. And from your own content policy, these posts should have been deleted. So why haven't they been deleted? Why are they still there? Did you? Uh, we delete things if they are illegal. But these have been up there for a while. Are they illegal? Uh, no, they're not illegal, but they're hateful and they can, they can lead to violence. As I just read to you, the shooters, you know, in all of these mass shootings, attributed social media to radicalizing. So, so Don, you love censorship is what you're saying? No, I don't love censorship. Then why, why are you asking? I believe in moderation, but I, I don't believe in censorship. Is a, it's a, moderation is a propaganda word for censorship. You, you can find, like, a, a, you can sign up right now and, and, and do a, a hundred things that are hateful. Um, but if nobody reads it, it doesn't matter. So the, you, can, you can think of X as being, it's much like the internet. It's not some, t- it's some tiny publication with like 20 articles a day. It's 500 yeah, million. Uh, but everyone has the opportunity to read it, Elon. And they, they, they you don't have the opportunity to read, read the internet. Are you still, uh, suggesting we should shut down the internet? No. But that- okay, we're all much dumber for having mm-hmm. listened to that. That was hard to listen entire to. Co- t- <laughs> entire conversation. But okay, let's try and uh, extrapolate anything mm-hmm. important from mm-hmm. it. Number one, Elon is correct when he's like, you can find a fake study to say anything. But by and large, I actually find his counter even more annoying because he's embracing this idea of like algorithmic deranking. I don't believe in any of that. Actually, I believe that hate speech is free speech and that you should be allowed to put it up. I mean, look, you know, you can have an offensive meme or all of that. And Don was like, why is that still up? And then he confuses it being illegal with it. Well, maybe not illegal, but you know, why, why should it be up there? I'm like, well, you know, it's not, Ill- it's not illegal. That's why it should stay up there. So there's, both of them are kind of talking in fakery, which much of this is an advertising problem, which belies Elon's entire business model itself. That's kind of secondary. But 
I think the bigger problem is that Don cannot like literally wrap his head around that correct counter where he's like, well, people could read this. It could lead to X, Y, or Z with the idea that it could be extended. This links very much with our Supreme Court case that we just talked about. And that overall, it's a complete lack of understanding of First Amendment. And it's like truly wrapped in a censorious mindset. So I thought it was just idiocy really all the way, all the way around. Don Lemon clearly has a very bad case of CNN brain. Yeah. And it is not letting go. His firing and, you know, being out and now being independent or whatever has not changed the way he views the world one inch. Because so clearly the area that I think would be more difficult for Elon to respond to is you claim to be this avatar of free speech, but you're not. I mean, even his view, and we've discussed this on the show before, that he articulates of like, I follow the law. Well, okay, in this country where we have a First Amendment, that may work out fine. And by the way, he hasn't followed, you know, strictly just what the law requires in this country. Let me get to that in a moment. But when you think about a repressive regime that doesn't have free speech, his policy is still not a free speech commitment, but I will follow the law. And so you have him, you know, for example, in India. Uh, Twitter censored this uh, documentary that was critical of Modi. They took that down. This is something that The Intercept and Ryan Grimm reported on. So if it is a, and and Jack Dorsey brought this up Mm -hmm. as well when we spoke with him, that actually they were much more willing under Jack to rebuff repressive countries that were demanding censorship in that may be consistent with their own repressive laws in their country than Elon has been. So A commitment to I will strictly follow the law no matter what the law says is not actually a free speech commitment. So that's number one. Number two, you know, I just mentioned the Modi thing. We also have had the example right now, post October 7th, of Elon saying that he's going to ban the terms from the river to the sea and decolonization with regards to Israel and Palestine. How is that a commitment to free speech? So those are the areas where I would like to see him respond. I would like to see him attempt to answer because there's a significant distance between how he has held himself out and the way he has actually run this platform. But because Don has such CNN brain, the problem has to be on the other side that he's not censoring enough. He's not being censorious enough. He's not doing enough, quote unquote, moderation. And so you end up with this, you know, sort of crazy making, quote unquote, debate. And then the other pieces you point out, Sagar, is Elon is also saying something here that is, I would say, also inconsistent with free speech that he's like, well, yeah, technically we leave the stuff up on the platform, but we mm-hmm. basically bury it so no one can see it. And Don can't really wrap his head around what he's talking about. I mean, he's talking here about shadow banning. He's talking about using the algorithm to suppress this type of content so absolutely no one can see it. And that's another area that would be interesting to dig into. But it seems to me like he's not really even grasping what Elon is saying. I mean, in fairness, Elon doesn't want to use terms like shadow ban because that sounds bad. So he's not being really straightforward about what he's trying to articulate. He's like a little cagey about it, but that's clearly what he's laying out. And I think that that is worth exploration as well, but that none of that happens. Yeah. There, there's a moment that um, we didn't include in this clip because it was already very long, but where Don gets in this fight with a well, mainstream media would never post this type of hateful content. He's still standing yeah. for CNN even after all of this. So anyway, well, look, there you go. There's been an, no evolution, I guess is what I would say. It's not an accident that immediately after he's fired, the first place he goes back to is CNN. CNN. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's exactly kind of, you know, teach, can't teach an old dog new tricks. His overall mindset is just completely uh, devoid of any like grasp of the First Amendment, which is genuinely concerning for somebody who's allegedly been in broadcast for like what twenty something years, maybe thirty years now. Yeah. At this point, mm-hmm. and who made his whole career, and then you know it's also so it's it's very counter because the moment that he that Elon fires him or doesn't sign his contract or whatever. He's like, well, I thought you believed in free speech. I'm like, dude, you don't believe in free speech. So which one is it, bro? <laughs> like, what, what are we actually doing here? And then, you know, I just find it so egregious. Every time they do this to Zuckerberg, they did it to, to Jack. Now they're doing it to Elon. Any of these people, they find like the worst content. They're like, why is this still up there? It's like, guys, they're not defending the content. It's about the principle. Yeah. I mean, for example, I'll touch the third rail. I don't think Kanye should have been banned for tweeting a swastika. Swastika's a a hateful symbol. I abhor it. That said, 
well, and he even posted it genuinely in a pro-Nazi way. Mm -hmm. Not illegal. Sorry. He should be allowed to do it. And guess what? He suffered private consequences. It's not like it worked out for him yeah. all that well. You don't need to take it down for no reason. I'll give another one. He banned the Elon jet account for no reason except for the fact that he alleged that it was doxing. It's bullshit. It's completely wrong. It's like, sorry, yeah, I, I get It's probably annoying. That said, you can do it for any celebrity, including Taylor Swift or any of these other folks. So sorry. Like, that's, I guess, the price that it is to be like ultra wealthy. Good for you. You can afford to, you can afford like hyper around the clock security. So that's just what comes with the territory. He still always like reaches for it in a shadow banning sense and others. I still believe that the greatest golden age of the internet was like 2011 or so, right when Twitter was still calling themselves a free speech wing of the free speech party. Everything let fly. Everything was equal in an algorithm. And yeah, it led to some uncomfortable things, but you know, that's part of what it means to live in a free and an open society. And that's when the internet was a tool of dissonance and it was a tool of people being able to speak out. And unfortunately, what we've seen is instead like a mainstream capture of the internet. It's part of why the Supreme Court case and this Don Lemon thing really go together is because that elite mindset about the ability to police what and how and the rules around these things is their most treasured power, especially as they continue to lose it in the number of viewers that they have. Yeah, I mean, there's just, a, a whole lack of confidence in the sort of baseline concepts of, you know, there's supposed to be bedrock to America, including free speech, including a commitment to democracy. They're so terrified of if you actually allowed people to self-govern, mm -hmm. what that would look like. And so, you know, it's, a, um, it's an anti-democratic backlash, and you see it with liberals, you see it with conservatives when it's comes to speech that they don't like as well. It really is an elite-led phenomenon, and um, you know none of that was really grappled with in this particular debate. Uh, I guess I would say, bottom line, you know, it, it made me a little more sympathetic to Elon pulling yeah. the plug <laughs> afterwards <Yeah. laughs> because he was just like, "Wow, that was." bad and uh, ridiculous, and I don't think that the, I really want to lend my dollars. But it also made me question the original, like, I was gonna why say. did you think that this was going to go well to start with? What was it in the Don Lemon lexicon uh, body of work that you thought was really worth, like, supporting and lifting up? So I guess that's what that's I That's my counter. Is I'm like, yeah. dude, why did you think that he had changed at all? Like, if anyone could have told you that, anybody who's ever worked with Don Lemon, read any of the stories about Don Lemon, have watched him in that thing, he's an egomaniac who is dedicated to a very specific worldview. And when you hired him, there was no evidence that he had changed whatsoever. So, you know, if anything, I don't have any particular sympathy for Elon. No, I mean, case. I don't either. Yeah. I don't either. I, I, listen, if if Don Lemon had started his show and he was doing things right. that were interesting totally and he learned different. something from his experience, like these things happen, you know, when you totally. get let go from a job, it can be a like, you know, a real shakeup mm -hmm. moment for you and your perspective can change. It did for me when I got fired from MSNBC, so I can speak to that. But um, clearly none of that has yet yep. occurred. So we'll Agreed. continue to see. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new, we wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.